It's April 13th. I'm just going to take another look at my fig tree wintering box. I showed this in the middle of winter in the last video and just want to show you a little bit closer how it's, um, how it's made and, and I'm pretty happy with it too. So um, this is the box. That's my Chicago hardy fig tree. I used to always bury it in this uh, bed there. It's getting to be a lot of work. You have to cut off all the roots on the, uh, the right side there, tip it over into a big pit buried there and then cover it up. And um, most years it survived very well that way. Uh, last year it had a bit of damage. Uh, I probably didn't put enough dirt and insulating straw on top of that dirt. Uh, so it, it did get a bit of winter kill. Uh, it died mostly, most of the way back to the stump. It grew fine back up the next year, that last year, and uh, actually fruited as well too. So it can die back and fruit in the same, same year. Uh, but I just think this will get a, a better head start. And I've got a very short season up here in Canada, so uh, need that uh, head start of, of good long established branches. So this is the box. It's made out of 2x4 and uh, plywood and it's insulated with, with uh, styrofoam. Um, I use this. It's a little bit cheaper. It's foil lined uh, styrofoam. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper than the, uh, the pink stuff. There's a little chunk of that pink insulation here. Next time I think I'll use the, the pink insulation for everything even though it's a bit more expensive. This is only the first year and already there's quite a bit of styrofoam that chips off and blows around. It's just putting garbage in the, the garden so I'll probably stick with the pink stuff and maybe it could even go thicker. This is um, two inches I guess. Inch and a half or two inches. Uh, but the way I built this box with the 2x4s going this way, you could actually have a thicker insulation to make it flush here. And that would just save a bit of energy because I'm heating this with uh, two light bulbs. They're 100, I believe they're 100 watt light bulbs. Just plugged into this device I got on, on Amazon. Uh, it just plugs in and it's set to minus 5, I believe. Minus 5 or minus 2, I can't remember. To come on and then it comes off at minus 0 0.5. So it keeps it just below freezing. And uh, these two light bulbs, I, I've got two, the adapter there and two light bulbs, just in case one goes out. Um, I check on this every couple of weeks, lift up the lid and see if both light bulbs run when it's really cold. And actually it's usually takes minus 15 or minus 20 before it's cold enough to turn this on. I don't think it's actually operating that much during the winter. It would be nice to have a meter on this to see how much electricity it's using, but at the very most, on the coldest days, it's turning on two light bulbs, so it's, it's not crazy. It's just an old stick that keeps keeps the light bulbs uh, centered so they're not touching uh, the foam on the outside. And then there's just the mono foam, expanding foam in between the cracks. Yeah, I try to keep it as tight as possible in the corners here. It's just four panels that all screw apart and uh, stack. That, uh, that works okay. It does still take up a lot of room. Here's one of the panels I've taken off. It's April 13th today, so uh, we're not going to have too much more freezing weather and it won't get very cold. But here's the panels, four of them stack up plus the lid. It takes up a bit of room, so you need some storage space for that during the summer. Um, and I could have gone higher. This one is probably about five feet tall. Uh, so I had to cut off some of the this all grew from last year, but I had to cut off some of the, the leading shoots. I probably took a foot or two off that one. So you could go higher if you wanted to keep the uh, the tree higher, but this is going to have a great head start this year. You can see, um, if that's focusing, you can see how green this is. The, the, the bud is fine there. It's nice and alive. Uh, the stems are very green. All this is going to take off from from the whole tree so no need to start from uh, ground zero for this year so I think this is happy I'm good I'm happy with this and um, I might build a second one I am thinking about overwintering a banana outside as well and I might make that one a bit taller maybe we'll make that six feet or, or even seven feet problem with getting too tall is you're, you're catching more wind so uh, I had staked this up I had put a, a t-bar stake in there and roped it and it is screwed into the wooden bed as well too a little bit, but uh, it did hold up fine. And it's got a rock on top of the roof there, it's all that keeps the roof on. Just one other thing I did do is I know the roots from digging in this garden, the roots spread out. So uh, a couple pieces of that pink insulation come out about three feet. 
Um, so there's under this soil is the the pink insulation, and that just is going to keep the freezing, the frost from getting in too far and killing the roots that spread outside the box. And that would be fine if they died because there's enough live stuff in the box, but just gives it more of a head start the next season. Anyways, hope this helps. It's one of several techniques to overwinter a fig tree in a very cold winter.